Now, Nuke X powerful 3D tracker node will help us to create a full 3D scene from this footage. The more information about the room and the camera you have, the better. If you are on set in the filming, try to get as much information as you can. Try to get lens information. When I'm talking about lens information, try to get the actual lens, the aperture, the zoom level, everything. Film a grid of distortion and also try to get some measurements out of the room. Basic measurements of how wide it is, how, how much it has in depth. All that information can make a huge difference between an average track or a very good solid track. So, to start tracking, since now we have a lens distortion calculated, we can summon the 3D tracker out of the 3D menu. So if you go into the 3D menu, you will find the 3D tracker, it's called Camera Tracker. So in the 3D menu, pick up the Camera Tracker. The Camera Tracker, and if you just bear with me in one second because it's pretty big, it's, it's bigger than my screen here, the Camera Tracker has basically uh, one input, and that input is the source footage. Now. Since we already calculated the lens distortion here, but I want to have a secondary stream just for the tracking in the 3D uh, f that we are going to build up from the room, I'm going to plug in the source into the footage and I'm going to just branch this out. So, so far we have three branches. We have one branch which is basically the lens distortion that we are not going to use anymore until we need it. We also have one branch which is going to be our main composite branch that has the undistorted plate and a third branch which has the 3D tracker. Now the 3D tracker has two inputs. It has a source input but it also has a mask input. The mask input is only needed if you have a piece of footage that has movement on it. I mean like someone walking in front of the camera. Uh, some um, smoke or some explosion or some snow or rain anything that is moving in the plate will give problems to the 3D tracker so you need to make sure that you isolate the static areas of your footage before you start tracking that is why we have a mask input now the camera tracker is divided into a lot of tabs. I'm going to just open it up here. We have a first tab which is the camber tracker itself. Now the camber tracker itself allows you to select a mask if we would have one. You, call, you can also assign a clip range because maybe the starting and ending point of your tracking is not the same as the footage timeline. So you could as assign something here. We don't need to change it because we are going to track the 100 frames of this sequence. And down here we have the analysis uh, section, which basically allows you to track, solve, and create the scene. Now, what's going to happen here is that this is going to be a step-by-step -step procedure. We are first going to track features, we're going to then refine them and finesse them, and then we're going to solve the camera, we're going to refine and finesse the camera, and then we are going to finally create the scene in 3D. Now, the first step will be going into the lens tab. Just one very fast recap about them. The first tab we already talked about. The second tab is the Refine tab. The Refine tab is the tab where we are going to refine the values, the error, the projection error, the track length. All those kind of settings will be stored, it will be stored here and can be changed. And this also allows us to recalculate the solve. This tab will only work after we've tracked something. The tracking tab is where we change the settings of the tracker. I mean the amount of features to track, the separation between them, how many frames you want them to be in the screen, all those kind of techniques. Also, you can also add 2D tracks to help with your 3D tracking. You can import them, you can export them as you would like. The other tab is the solver. The solver allows you to bring in the information of the camera and lens if you have one. If you know the lens information and the kind of camera that was in the set, 
then you can pipe in the information as focal length, film backside, etc. The lens information is where you put the lens in distortion information into the clip. So that's what we're going to do next. We are going to bring in whatever we've done from the lens distortion, we're going to plug it into here. The last two tabs are only meant for the final stage of the tracking. They are meant for you to refine your scene. In this case, you can refine the scene by translating it, by rotating it, by changing the scaling, and also by putting a scale constraint. So open the lens distortion node. So let's just, I'm sorry that I have so, many, so little space, but I'm gonna open the lens distortion node. And as you can see, they look very similar. Now, the first thing is that I'm going to, in the lens distortion type, I have an option of no lens, of none, known lens, of refine and unknown. I have a full knowledge of the lens, so I'm gonna put known lens and I know it's spherical, and now I am going to actually select the single values that you have here and drag them to there. I'm going to use the control and drag function so I can actually drag the entire animation and link the, those two. So control and drag, both radial distorts. Control or command if you're using a Mac like I am. So now that this is done, both the lens distortion node and the 3D tracking has the same lens. I'm going to now close the lens distortion node. You can see now also, also that we have an expression link between them. So if we do decide to change the lens distortion at any moment, we can always have it automatically relinked to the camera tracker. Now, if I put my viewer into the camera tracker, you can see that the lens distortion by default is not being affected. This is because we need to make sure we click undistorted input in here. If we do not do that, the clip won't be undistorted after it gets through the camera tracker. The second place I'm going to go is the tracking tab. So go into the tracking tab and you can change the settings of the tracker and also preview the tracker in this uh, section. Click on preview features to see the trackers. Once we click in preview features, we can see that we have all these points in orange in the image that Nuke is going to start to use for its 3D tracker. This will give you the position of where Nuke will track 2D points to try to solve a 3D camera. The number of features will increase the number of trackers. Usually just increasing to a very high number will not necessarily give you a better track. So I do highly recommend for you to try several different values. Now I am going to bring my footage to full screen so I can see it a little better. At the moment you can see that the number of features is 150. If for example I change this to 300 you can see that now I have more tracking numbers. If I change this to 600, I even have even more trackers. Now, if you scrub through the footage, you can see that those points also will change with time because Nuke will not be able to track them all at all times during the footage because some of these points will go off screen, other points will shake too much, and of course that all will depend from the settings you have on the tracking. I'm going to use 600 as my number of features because I, I, although I have a lot of, I have way too many trackers for the table, I don't have a lot of trackers for the walls. I want to make sure I have enough tracking points in the wall because the wall will be a very important part of this tutorial. We're going to put place things in the wall. We're going to put blood spatters. We're going to put a hole in the wall. So we need to make sure we have a solid track on the wall. Now. The number of features will allow you, of course, to have more or less uh, features. The detection threshold and the separation will allow you to spread them in or out. So, for example, if I change the detection threshold, you can see that the spreading of those features will change. I'm going to bring it back to where it was. I've actually already experimented with these tracking values, so I am going to leave the default setting because it gave me a pretty good uh, uh, track. Now, the separation 
will also change the way the points are separated or scattered to the footage. Since I have a lot of points, I am going to lower my future separation to 8 instead of the 12. The important thing is to scrub through the footage and check if you have enough features to use to get a, a good representation of the room. The trick is to have a good spread of tracks in the most important parts of the footage. So we know we want to put something in the frame here, so we have to have a lot of points there. We want to have points in the table because we want to make sure the table has some blood spatters. And of course we have to have a few good representation of the wall. So by scrubbing it I can actually see where the points will end up. I can even preview it as well, of course, but it will do, it will take some time to actually preview in real time. At this moment, we can go back to the camera tracker first tab. And in the first tab, we can click on track features. Once we click in track features, it will take a few minutes to have the track done. It will first track the entire piece of footage until the end, and then it will do a reverse track. Okay, so now that we have all the points tracked, so this is the 2D point, you can now scrub through the footage and just basically have a look if your points are actually corresponding to the correct tracking. I'm just going to bring it like this. Now, at this stage, the only thing you can do is if you zoom in closely, you can look at the tracks and actually see how long are they on screen. For example, this track is only 11 frames on screen, this one is only 10 frames on screen, this is 100 frames on screen. So some tracks will be better than others, but at the moment you can clearly see that we have a pretty good track to use. We also, at this point, can double check if we have any points that we know for sure that are gonna give us problems. For example, if we have any reflection points, because reflections should not be tracked, because reflections actually are occurring on a different perspective than our footage. As you can see, for example, if I now just scrub here, uh, around frame 80 something, you can see that part of the reflection is actually having a point. So this point over here is giving you a total different combination of tracks. So the problem is that this point is actually going to the opposite way of all the other points. So let's start by actually taking it away. We can take it away by selecting it like I did by using the mouse and then we can right click and say that we want to delete. We have three options at this stage which is the 2D track stage. We can delete them, we can actually bring out 2D information out of these points and we can also center to the selection. Now I'm going to delete that point. Also you need to make sure that you do not have any points that are the crossing of different objects from different perspectives. So imagine that you have points that are actually tracking the position of the table together with the frame. That point for example is a wrong point because that point is thinking that the combination of these two elements is actually a feature. So I'm going to delete that one as well. Now, you could just continue and scrub a little here and there to try to figure where the bad points are. Although, we do have so many good points that I don't think you need to waste too much time on this section. 